The Rolling S1 ticks all my boxes, of which there are two. It is so small that it is easy to hide from your loved ones, and by extension, number two. It is portable and battery powered, so it is so easy to bring it along in case you have to escape in a hurry. The Rolling S1 is tweakable indeed. And I am going to go through a set of seven tweaks, or eight, nine, perhaps six. Anyway, tweak is a misnomer. But first and foremost, here is probably Roland's first tweak ever. Roland, a name that reverberates like a cathedral. Not among everyone, of course. No offense. The origin of the name. What is it? Roland, chosen by its Japanese founder Ikatoru Kakahashi because of its commercial potency. The simple reason being it is pronounceable in most languages. So Ikatoru Kakahashi started Roland with a tweak, didn't he? Well, let's continue in that fashion, fittingly with Roland Aira Compact S1 tweaks it. You can bend, say, the pitch by tilting the S1. That's a pretty unique tweak in my mind. Just enter D motion by pressing Shift plus D motion and select pitch bend. To activate the effect, just hold the D motion button and start tilting it. There's also the option of rolling the S1, so you can modulate two parameters at once, one by tilting and another one by rolling. <laughs> oh, I had fun and laughed during this little test. There was no mockery. Access to varied types of input gestures is something at the heart of so-called West Coast Synthesis, as pioneered by the inimitable Don Buchla. You can access note, velocity, gate length, probability and so-called sub-steps for each step by holding down a step of your choosing and then press D motion. Here I add a second sub-step to step 1. Think of it as a sort of a ratcheting, you can vary the sub-step pattern. You do not need to have three sub-steps in a row, you can have one, then a silent one, then a third one. The S1 can record motions meaning you can adjust, say, the attack or filter for each step individually, or many at once while your sequence is playing. Up to eight parameters can be recorded. Usually you would enter some notes and then record motion. But hey, why not reverse this? Motion first, then notes. On the S1, motion and notes can be deleted separately making this reverse approach viable. This is an empty 32-step sequence. The current settings sound like this. Now I record some motions onto the sequencer. When I'm finished, I take a listen while holding down a key. This gives me an idea of what kind of motions I have recorded. And I would like to add a chord onto this sequence, just a chord.
Notice that the display says full when I try to modulate additional parameters. It cannot record more than 8 parameters. Here is something Roland really needs to address in a future firmware update. Certain sequences, or patterns if you like, create clicky sounds when changing from one to another. Here is a test I made. I copied pattern on pad 9 to pad 10, hence 9 and 10 are identical. I have even set the effects to be global. Now, when changing from 9 to 10 or 10 to 9, clicking is heard. To automate the release or any parameter, press the record button, adjust the parameter, release in this instance, and then deselect record. Now we will add a chord on step 17. First we activate step mode. I then press record and ST1 is displayed, meaning step 1. I move through the steps until I reach step 17 using the big knob on the left. Then deselect step mode to see what notes are active on that step. Now I add a triad and have a listen. The S1 is a very modern synth. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at what it offers. The S1 has plenty of options and features. Storage-wise, it has 4 banks with 16 patterns each, 7 types of reverbs, you can adjust pre-delay, length, time, density, filters, then a delay with sync, filter, volume and time settings. There are 4 types of choruses available, and you can draw your own waveform replacing the stock square wave coming with the S1. There's a chop feature that lets you chop up or slice all four oscillators. Yes, there are four oscillators. In addition to the square wave, the main oscillator, you have sub oscillator, saw oscillator and one for noise. Then add a rich filter section, portamento tie, motion recording, a flexible step sequencer, arpeggiator, pulse width modulation, four voice polyphony, unison mode for example, ADSR envelope and the so called D motion and a section of in-depth settings where you can adjust the LFO, set the effects to be local, to global, etc, etc, etc. All this in a sturdy quality frame a small form factor and, most importantly, at the price of just $199. Unthinkable, perhaps, just five years ago. This is the result of the exponential increase of computer power, the phenomenon of miniaturization and an intensely efficient global supply chain. The S1 is a true Roland product. It's emblematic of the vision of Kakahashi. Powerful musical gear at an affordable price. An invitation to the masses, to the teenagers dreaming of becoming successful in music and professionals alike. The portability of the S1, battery powered as it is, rechargeable using any USB charger, combined with its rich set of features and affordability, empowers every single one who has an inclination towards music making. I think the S1 is the new standard to 